This evening is the fifth lecture on wider contextualized biblical hermeneutics. So we are happy to have Dr. David Zoy once again in our meet to give a lecture to us on the parables of Jesus in the Gospels. The session will be moderated by Dr. Johnson Thomas Kuti. Dr. Johnson Thomas Kuti teaches New Testament in Union Biblical Seminary, Pune. And he is a person engine behind, the engine of this course. So he will be moderating this uh, evening session. Uh, without spending much time, I hand over the time to him. Over to you, sir. So hello, friends. Uh, good evening. Uh, this is a wonderful opportunity for us to gather once again. As you know that this is a uh, 25 session long series. So in that case, we have already uh, covered four. And today we are into the fifth session. You know that uh, our today's speaker is uh, not somebody who is unfamiliar and who was giving the inaugural lecture. Okay, in that way, and in many other ways we know him, and uh, Reverend Dr. David Joy is a well-known uh, New Testament scholar, both in India and around the world. Especially he is known in the field of post-colonial interpretation of the New Testament. And uh, his doctoral dissertation was done on the Gospel of Mark. And he was reading the Gospel of Mark with a post-colonial okay, reading. And he completed his PhD from the University of Birmingham. And for several years, he was a leading faculty at the United Theological College in Bangalore. And right now, he is moved over to the Kerala United Theological Seminary. That means uh, KUTS in Kannamula, Trivandrum. That is another well-known uh, theological seminary in India. And today we are very much fortunate to have him to speak on the topic as the fifth uh, lecturer on the topic, the parables of Jesus in the Synoptic Gospels. So, Dr. David Joy, this is our privilege and our honor to have you this evening time. And you can take your time and go ahead. May God bless you. Thank you, uh, moderator Dr. Johnson uh, Thomas-Huti and uh, senior uh, New Testament scholars uh, and, and other researchers and all those who are present today's evening lecture. Good evening. This is evening. a new venture in terms of popularizing the scripture and making the scripture properly interpreted and explained for the academic world as well as the wider public. In that sense, the efforts taken by Dr. Johnson Tom Suti along with the uh, uh, Ecumenical Christian Center. And all my friends are there in the Ecumenical Christian Center. It's uh, commentable. And I'm sure after this course, once the collection of the presentations are uh, edited and published, it will be a, a milestone contribution in terms of New Testament scholarship as well as the study of the scripture in our context. And it's fast changing context. And I should say, parables of Jesus, though we use in our sermons, classes, and our deliberations, we haven't paid attention to the parables of Jesus. And one school of teachers always say, yeah, that was to explain certain things to the ordinary people. 
and an intellectual like John did not include parables. And some school of thought and teachers say, no, no, parables are very important because uh, uh, parables, when Jesus used the parables, he revealed certain layers of meaning, multiple layers of meaning. But today evening, I am taking a systematic uh, approach, uh, uh, inviting you to come with me uh, to various levels of parables. Why parables today? Today, we live in a context where the multiculturalism is the leading ideology. And we all talk about the transnational media. And we develop tools to analyze powers and weaknesses. And we talk about the tabernacling God. We talk about the relationship between Christianity and other religions. And we have a language uh, to explain religious matters as well as uh, secular matters. But today's context, if I put it in black and white so by using straightforward language, parables are the clear indications to the world of Jesus. And this is not an overnight study. Uh, this study began with uh, 1910, Adolf Julliker. Adolf Julliker developed a lot of tools in terms of studying parables. And uh, two senior so scholars who are present here, Dr. Nyanavaram and Dr. Kanagaraj, and Dr. Taka Injan also have seen his. Uh, they all know, particularly Dr. Nyanavaram has worked systematically in Matthian parables. Of course, Julikar uh, has contributed very well, but because of you know, the British German uh, scholarship and its division, Julikar's contributions did not uh, present very well by others. But then comes C.H. Dodd. Why I make these names? Because they are the milestone people. They are the major contributors in terms of studying and analyzing parables. He started in 1935, he established viewing parables by his persuasive and influential reading of the parables. And it is a well-known phrase, the parables of the kingdom of God. There is nothing. C.S. Dot, you think about parable, this is parables and the kingdom of God. And he uses the phrases like the parables of crisis, parables of growth, setting in life of Jesus' ministry and always uh, discover their relationship to his proclamation of the coming reign of God and so on. I don't want to say that the C.S. Dodd initiated some kind of historical Jesus uh, discussion. No. But he provided a theological and historical overview of how one could approach parables very well. Forget about those two names. Then comes Joachim Jeremiah. I think most, most of our uh, uh, New Testament uh, teachers and classes will probably hang around the Joachim Jeremiah, 1947 and up to 1963. He built on Julikar and Dodd, and uh, he made a comparison. Uh, and, but he criticized the Julikar and Dodd, and Joachim Jeremiah had the courage to depart uh, from Dodd and to uh, take initiative to reveal the meaning of parables of Jesus. And Jeremiah brought uh, ethical dimensions of parables and the theological dimensions of parables. And he also communicated very clearly that parables of Jesus are the indication of the gospel framework and in order to understand the gospel values and gospel framework, you need to study uh, parables. And he uses uh, very uh, passionate terms like uh, God's mercy for sinners, God's love, and all those things. And then applying form critical and reduction critical approaches. And uh, we have uh, a clear tradition called Dodd Jeremiah tradition. 
and the other scholars are not ignored or forgotten but dot jeremiah's tradition is still very clear a single theological theme dot says take a parable identify a single theological theme and then explain it but jeremiah says you should see a variety of theological themes in parables like uh, existential uh, themes but here we should also notice a kind of danger in making too much uh, historical studies of parables and we have we are familiar with my students are here vicky is here subu is here and a couple of others are here and see uh, the danger is uh, if you say no this gives us a picture of historical jesus we are fooled no no historical jesus uh, uh, you cannot identify historical jesus by studying the parables uh john dominic crossan's uh, famous book the Pre present mediterranean present and the choices work 56 60 they are they have taken insights from parables to construct or deconstruct or deconstruct uh, uh, historicity of jesus and the historical jesus rooted much deeper than the parables parables are probably a language used to by uh, the gospel writers and the, 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 the most uh, heavenly definition is the parables of Jesus have long been revered as earthly stories with heavenly meaning. Earthly stories with heavenly meaning. I think Dr. Janavar is smiling because probably that is what he used to say in the synoptic gospel class. Uh, but you see, that, that, that is a beauty, that, there is a beauty in understanding that definition. But we need to move forward from that dimension to another dimension. So what I have tried to say in this first stage is I have five sessions. This is the first session. That is the parables are not simply uh, stories used by Jesus. Rather, parables generally reveal historical and theological framework, matrix, milieu, context of Jesus' movement. In order to understand or catch up the real uh, milieu of that uh, parable or uh, that uh, framework, uh, we need to know who are the people now studying parables. And one person is uh, uh, William Herzog, the parables as subversive speech. It's a very, very, very interesting book. William Herzog. I think there are people like uh, Gerald West in the South African context and in Asian context, there are many people from Queen and others. They are all doing uh, this type of work. But uh, our attempt, I should say, should not uh, end here. After these 20 lectures, we should form small communities of Bible studies across India and develop our own hermeneutic uh, by using parables of Jesus. And then what does a parable reveal. I should, without any hesitation, say parables of Jesus generally reveal religious diversity in the Greek or Roman world. Not only religious diversity, cultural diversity, socio political diversity, and the uh, customs and practices of uh, uh, Greek or Roman world. And we have a very famous uh, article. Uh, written by uh, Yesler. Yesler is a familiar person, Philip F. Yesler, uh, namely Palestinian Judaism in the first century. Uh, for this lecture, I must read, again reading uh, that article, Palestinian Judaism in the first century, Philip Yesler. He never mentioned anything of the parables, but most of the insights and the ideas that he has taken to prepare his article coming from parables. Then I was thinking, why can't I link parables with the Palestinian Judaism? Then I have carefully read the four or five parables and its background. Then, yes, parables generally uh, present the context of Palestinian uh, Judaism. And of course, other Judaisms and other forms of Judaism are all there. But generally, it presents a historical overview of Palestinian Judaism uh, by revealing the elite uh, elitism, non-elitism, 
subversiveness, subalternity, and other hegemonic practices of Palestine. Particularly, the nature of agrarian society and social system is mentioned very clearly in uh, uh, parables. Suppose you take a, a branch, a parabolic studies, then you will understand the distinctiveness of Mediterranean culture. And you know, Jesus is well known for the brevity of words. And those brevity of words, uh, even in say, stating parables, he uh, was particular to use the cultural terminology. And in our study, what we uh, omit is, particularly in Dodd or Jer Jayak in Jeremiah's tradition, we just leave out those uh, phrases and the terminological things. Rather, we just pick up kingdom, we just pick up some other uh, uh, theological ideas, and then we do the, uh, we kind of imposition. And we impose our ideas, and then let the parables speak. Uh, we give meaning, and we take meaning. That's not. That, so this type of systematic studies should enable us to see the you know, first century Palestine and its uh, a variety of meaning. And let's take one or two major points uh, that we get from the um, parables about the Palestinian uh, Judaism. And it talks about the ethnicity and Judaism, which is very relevant in today's context. Very relevant, with particularly the context of migrant workers and the uh, racial issues. And the nomenclature used uh, in the uh, parables and all those uh, Conclusive words, affirmative words used in parables are revealing the socio-cultural uh, dimensions of the uh, first, first century Palestine. And uh, if you study parables very well, I said that, you know, it gives us the indication to the Jesus world. But if you study parables very well, you will also understand the cultic practices of the first century and the administration and the hierarchy in first century the economic dimension of uh, first century uh, Christianity. And it should also tell us who are the elite class, who are the members of the elite class. And uh, it also talks about uh, many other uh, mm, options. Can you hear me? Yes, many other options. And uh, the Palestinian culture is presented very well. And uh, the moment you talk, we talk about Jesus movement, we talk about taxation, we talk about agriculture, we talk about the peasants and farmers and so on. From where we do get those ideas? From parables. And if you just consider parables as stories uh, without any proper roots, then uh, you are mistaken. And you need to know that Jesus deliberately crafted those parables while talking to the uh, people. Of course, parables went through different stages of redaction. Parab before the collection of uh, final editing of parables. And uh, this is the second uh, uh, layer, uh, part of my presentation. Parables revealed Palestinian Judaism and its uh, uh, administration, cultic and custom practices. And thirdly, and most importantly, parables uh, uh, generally give us or the major dimensions of kingdom of God. Though I said C.S. Lord and kingdom of God, uh, I did not want to uh, leave things there. I want to take those things and the major uh, uh, the insights of those uh, parables. And the decisive element of Jesus' ministry uh, by using exorcism and other uh, patterns of ministry, Jesus confronted with the hegemonic powers. And that kind of confrontation you see in parables. And take any parable. Parables are not the kind of, you know, making some kind of uh, uh, after dinner coffee, but very powerful. If the hearers, they devote themselves to uh, their meaning, it's a kind of very powerful uh, presentation. And the kingdom of God meaning is reflected in parables is basically is the reign of God and basically it's and it's a transformation that reveals truth transform 
And in the gospel, very fascinating terms are used, uh, like Emmanuel and so on. But it is in the parables you see the real uh, presence of God. And the parables are not uh, parables are uh, studied not only by New Testament scholars, Karl Barth, systematic theologian, and of course the outstanding New Testament theologian Rudolf Bultmann. They have all taken uh, parables uh, very seriously, and so the uh, various dimensions of parables. Uh, particularly in terms of the uh, kingdom of God, is very clearly mentioned in uh, parables. And uh, it's not only with the dot, his dot, and coming to Jayakin Jeremiah, and John Dummy Crossen, and Richard Horsley, and the modern readers of parables, they have all used the parables, uh, connecting parables with reign of God or the kingdom of God. And uh, I want to highlight the four aspects of parables and the kingdom of God um, connection. One is, this pa in parables, kingdom of God expels the kingdom of Satan. Or kingdom of God expels the kingdom of uh, evil. And that's very clear in Jesus' parable. Second uh, aspect, it's mentioned by Kumal, eschatological expectation in proclamation of Jesus is revealed through uh, parables. And that eschatological explanation is uh, uh, also connected with a proper understanding of the kingdom of God. And the third aspect is always uh, parables reflect a kind of theocentric ethics, not Christocentric ethics. Theocentric ethics. Hans Bald later mentioned uh, explaining the relationship between eschatology and ethics in Jesus' uh, preaching. And the fourth is, and take any parable, God is in absolute authority. God has control over things. Uh, these are the four major dimensions connecting parables with the uh, uh, kingdom of God. So we have seen the four, three aspects, the third part, third part is the parables and the kingdom of God. And the parables and the kingdom of God, you see not only the theological meaning of uh, kingdom of God, but also the actualization of kingdom of God is revealed in uh, parables. And the fourth question, that's my area of study, how parables are used uh, 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 by Jesus, and I use the present tense, uh, to encounter the Roman Empire. Take uh, many of those parables. Jesus implicitly as well as explicitly, both ways, directly and indirectly, use la uses language to confront with the power of the Roman Empire. He's not uh, subscribing to the uh, 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 rules and regulations of Roman Empire. Rather, he is confronting the Roman Empire. And the recent time, we are all familiar with the uh, uh, New Testament scholar who has contributed a lot in terms of uh, revealing Jesus' identity, Jewish identity, Gesa Vermes. And I was reading a book uh, uh, written by Gesa Vermes, The Authentic Gospel of Jesus. Of course, it talks about uh, a lot of non, uh, non canonical. Uh, material. And we are in New Testament uh, researchers use non-canonical uh, material. As uh, Dr. Johnson uh, Tonsuti is editing now the Asian uh, book, it's the introduction, but I'm sure many others uh, might have used uh, non-canonical material. So uh, it is, you need to be very careful. Because uh, in BD class or MTH class, when we talk about the parables, we also uh, refer from Gospel of Thomas and Q and law, a lot of uh, cluster material. Uh, it is not to minimize or uh, it is not to limit the meaning. Rather to say there are many parables and there is a history behind parables, but you can say parabolic history. And Gesa Vermas uh, very clearly say a significant part of religious message of Jesus' message uh, has been handed down in the form of parables. I repeat, a significant part of the religious message of Jesus has been handed down in the form of parables. 
compared with the succinct and vigorous proverbs and slightly more elaborate but still brief wisdom counsels the parables or similitudes are more developed literary composition so it's not simple stories rather it's a well developed and crafted literary composition this has got a long tradition of rabbinic tradition a mashal tradition and so on so gesavamus uses parables to reveal various traditions of synoptic gospel my task is to connect the parables with the synoptic tradition so i uh, should begin with the mark and the mark and the triple tradition is established by citing a number of parables the parable of the zoyer see so it's a very very important uh, uh, parable and it has got a triple tradition it is used in mark 4 it is seen in matthew 13 it is found in uh, luke 8 5 and it is also found in gospel of thomas so triple tradition and supported by a non canonical uh, book and uh, gesaver says you have uh, similar parables or the same parable a uh, books like a four tesra and other intertestamental books and the parable of the mustard seed again you have a triple tradition theory and that uh, parable is like uh, with what can we compare the kingdom of god or what parable shall we use for it it is like a grain of mustard seed and it is found in gospel of thomas 20 chapter 20 Mark chapter four, Matthew thirty, Luke thirty, and guess how much says to understand the metaphor, we have to bear in mind that the Jewish parlance, the mustard seed symbolizes the smallest volume or quantity, and it explains, and it is it comes from the rabbinic tradition, and the parable of the wicked uh, tenants and vineyard and fig tree all supported uh, by this argument. and then we have the famous tradition of matthew and luke q tradition the parable of reconciliation before appearing in court and so on so what uh, uh, gesavermus wants to communicate is parables are behind are the sources behind the formation of synoptic tradition not only parables and of course there are other sources but parables generally giving us a clear argument or strength to believe that uh, there is a common tradition or triple tradition or uh, whatever double tradition what we call it but uh, if you go along with the kloppenberg for example he is the pioneer of q studies and people like kloppenberg uh, uh, trying to establish a common source a written source probably developed in 20s or 30s of course who knows the uh, traditions and the researches researches will grow and then we will get uh, uh, outstanding meaning and so for the want of uh, lack of time i don't want to elaborate these parables that's the fourth uh, uh, dimension the non canonical contributions the contributions from the uh, sociological studies the contributions from the socio political uh, studies and finally before we go for the questions and uh, uh, clarifications because i am sure uh, there will be people who like to supplement uh, to the parables and there is a global oleum which uh, i want to uh, uh, show you global perspectives on the bible and this book is uh, published by pearson a couple of years back edited by mark ronans and joseph viven interestingly there are 10 articles on parables and out of 10 two from india one article written by myself and one from uh, surekha uh, nelavela and uh, these are all explanations but uh, these are the contextual interpretations of parables why contextual interpretation of parables uh, you need to read parables by connecting the parables with your own context taking from the palestinian context and then you place the parables with your life experience so that's what the, the, the modern contextual readers of the bible always try to do 
connecting parables with the slavery connecting parables with the racism connecting parables with the caste system connecting parables with the uh, other uh, unjust practices so that we will be able to uh, bring out the gospel meaning very clearly and uh, explain the gospel meaning uh, to the ordinary people and uh, i think korean christianity uh, they have uh, advanced quite well korean biblical scholars have used the parables uh, uh, quite well and what kind of contribution we are going to make after studying this parable and that we need to identify various uh, interesting gospel meanings Uh, from the parables and we also need to develop a kind of uh, pedagogy it to uh, educate with the gospel framework to uh, the uh, ordinary uh, people so parables have clear uh, understanding and clear meaning and clear framework to reveal the uh, meaning of the gospel so i have tried to uh, state five things first is the history of interpretation of the parables and the third parables will give you an idea about uh, uh, the world of jesus and uh, i also made a uh, caution a warning uh, will not give you the real picture of historical jesus and the second part uh, what i have mentioned is parables will take you to the palestinian judaism uh, its culture its politics its cult its customs and so on and thirdly you want to study kingdom of god you want to know what is reign of god study parables because parables uh, present generally uh, present various aspects of the kingdom of god and the reign of god and fourth aspect is should not ignore or neglect non canonical materials while studying parables because the uh, gospel of thomas has uh, uh, contributed or uh, given us a framework to understand the uh, parables uh, quite well and finally there's lot of potential in terms of understanding parables uh, from our own context our own stories our own life stories uh, our own experiences can uh, be a kind of perspectival glass to read the, the parabolic uh, meaning uh, once again thank you and i look forward to uh, learn from you by picking up some questions and the supplementary materials thank you very much so hello friends uh, we have heard a very elaborate and a rudite uh, lecture on parables in the synoptic gospels in relation to other materials and uh, uh, reverend dr david joy was uh, explaining his lecture in five great layers the history of the interpretation of the parables and the parables within the context of the palestinian judaism and parables in relation to the kingdom of god and parables in relation to the non canonical works and the potentiality of the parables when we interpret our own context in relation to the parables So thank you so much, sir, for this wonderful and elaborate and erudite uh, presentation, and we all are benefited by that. Now the floor is open for clarifications and questions, and uh, we need to make use of this time and uh, get the maximum out of our uh, Reverend Doctor David Joy. So you can open up. Thank you. Thank you. So, Milun, may you help me to find out the people who are having questions? Sure, sir. I will. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sir, can you please unmute yourself and speak? Yes, please unmute yourself may I, and may speak. I, may I speak? Yes, yes please. Yeah, I am Nyana Varam from Madurai, Tamil Nadu. thank you david it's a joy <laughs> david always brings joy <laughs> thank you it's lovely to hear from you uh, uh, very clear 
very very clear very useful thank you very much thank you for bringing the tension between julikar and uh, jeremiah's mm -hmm. i was uh, i noted that particular point to, to ask you but you clearly brought it <laughs> julikar only one meaning jeremiah's there are other meanings right you yes. know normally we new testament uh, teachers deal with that thank you for bringing it thank you uh, to give uh, time for others i have only one point yes that is you know normally when preachers take uh, the parables they take parables only for positive model mm -hmm. but there are parables which are spoken to take as negative models okay. uh it is uh, you know the subversive language mm -hmm. i hope you will all understand the subversive language which is used in the parables challenging language they look like positive models but they are negative models there are parables which have positive models there are parables which have negative models and there are parables which have both positive and negative models i will tell you only one example that comes from i have written an article on that but unfortunately it is in tamil uh, jesus and capitalism yesuvum mudalaalithuvum that is i must translate it into english jesus and capitalism the parable of the talents you know normally we explain that parable as if uh, uh the 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 owner was god the owner is god mm -hmm. and he shares his talents with all of us this is how we have been interpreting yes, yes. and we have to you know try hard and use our talents and all that those things uh, they all you know that but i have interpreted it okay. the owner is not god and uh, the people who got five talents and two talents they did immoral exploitative economical activities mm -hmm. by getting 100% income you know who is the model for us in that particular uh, parable mm -hmm. the person who hit the talent into the ground he is the model for all of us i'll i'll finish that mm -hmm. how because he was against the exploitative immoral economy of the kingdom of rome and he was not able to participate he did not participate in that and he rejected that economy then he was killed those who reject the powerful of the time will be killed mm -hmm. and that is jesus that is equal to jesus and finally i read that particular verse from that uh, parable for to all those who have more will be given and they will have in abundance but from those who have nothing even what they have will be taken away okay this is not a model mm -hmm. this is a ridicule ridiculing verse mm -hmm. this is a ridicule of the kingdom of rome mm -hmm. it's a subversive language that we need to understand please don't preach it as a model for our stewardship mm -hmm. normally this particular parable is given for stewardship sunday <laughs> understand yes thank you. you you may have questions but please uh, yes look yeah. i have i have uh, uh, in the chat room there are two questions Uh, shall I respond to that question? Yeah. One yes. is the uh, Austin Kraska. I see that you have used the terms kingdom of God and reign yeah. of God distinctly. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate on the difference? Okay. Another question is Ning Tu Jam Revi Chandra. Mm -hmm. How should we interpret the parable of Jesus? Mm -hmm. Is there any particular role of interpretation? Mm -hmm. And there is a third one. from paul lawrence g mm -hmm. what should we keep in mind when we explore the potential of contextual interpretation deviating from traditional interpretation without 
falling into ICGs. ICGs. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Anand uh, Nandavaram, uh, for the uh, enlightening. Uh, of course, it's supplementing things. See, uh, there's uh, a terminological difference between uh, uh, kingdom of God and reign of God. And the kingdom of God with a, a slight connotation of uh, geographical uh, setting. Whereas the reign of God comes from the Abrahamite religion, common religion, and uh, giving us a space about the new creation, peaceful coexistence of creation. Uh, this is not a very scientific uh, theological definition, but this is how I distinguish. A uh, slight uh, geographical connotation, uh, that's why the kingdom of God, and but the reign of God, certainly uh, talking about the new creation and the peaceful coexistence. And the next two questions, uh, I, I have one question privately asked, uh, the rules of interpretation of parable. Uh, let me say the contextual interpretation and the ICG system this is not to demerit the uh, traditional interpretation, but you look at the contextual interpretation, uh, widely used and read. Uh, I don't want to mention, uh, make names from the Indian context, but uh, the hostly, Gerald West, and Musa Dube, uh, Kokwila, all very outstanding uh, people who Connection boy. And they? Yes, we are able to hear you. you are, okay. Uh, uh, then I'll proceed. Then they, uh, those are the scholars with uh, uh, very good traditional, yeah, I got traditional. Sorry, my son was helping me. Uh, very good traditional understanding. At the same time, they have uh, inherited the contextual meaning. What is the precaution you need to take? Whatever contextual interpretation you make, what are the insights you apply, should not deviate from the gospel framework. And that's important. And you cannot make your own argument, your own frustrations, and your own uh, uh, articulations as gospel be rooted in the gospel, uh, the gospel of liberation, gospel of justice, gospel of peace, then equality, then interpretation. Of course, the rules uh, of interpreting the parables, Mark Bailey, B-A-I-L-E-Y. I know you can Google immediately and uh, find out. Uh, I like uh, his way of giving us the rules. He says, basically, you understand that this is a distinctive uh, literary figure. And using the figurative uh, language. So you study about the immediate setting of the parables. First rule. Second rule, you study about the historical setting of the parables. Third rule, you study about the cultural setting of the parables. Then you will get the theological meaning of the parable. And then uncover the parable as much as possible. For example, the parable of the uh, son, prodigal son, we call it. See, how many layers we can uncover? We may maximum uncover up to the first son. What about the mother? What about the sisters? What about the villagers? What about the workers in the family? So we don't want to uncover. This is kept an abrupt ending. Then you can uncover. Then the fifth rule is analyze as much as possible. So Chris Bailey. I think I have responded to the questions uh, written here. And uh, Indian context, Winslow was asking, par yes, parables are very important in the Indian context. And then it will also help us to uh, give a kind of positive uh, presentation about the gospel in the Indian context if uh, we use it. So some of the other questions that I see in the chat box. Uh, yes. One is from Winslow. 
how does parables contribute in encountering the power structures in india today and a second question is from uday mustafi can parables be interpreted for christian dogma if not then why and a third question from james joel bafari he is from bangladesh is there any chance to change the meaning of parable during contextualization and another question is by biju chako how that may be dr biju chako how the explanation of negative and positive parables differ from daniel otto vias parable of parables of tragedy and comedy okay so dogmas uh, uh, my clear answer is no no then you are uh, doing too much icg parables are not to basically to communicate the christian doctrine parables are basically to uh, create uh, gospel communities in palestine particularly in galilee uh, to understand the meaning of uh, jesus movement and sacrifice of course the dogmas and the interpretations uh, uh, only dogma you see if you call kingdom of god dogma then that's in the parable of course there are sociological parables sociological elements in parables and there are uh, christian theologians who use parables to explain ecclesiology and i would say those things are nonsense you see we it's not that uh, parable is a kind of big bomb you can apply for everything you be realistic and apply your uh, sensible scholar, uh, scholarly framework to understand the parable so it's a good question i would say no why i have explained and uh, dr biju chako of course we read the phd together we are not we did not study together he was uh, my student and i was his uh, teacher but uh, we call it uh, we i always say we journey together no dr biju uh, well there there can be a model nanio otobias uh, parables of tragedy and comedy can be a model to understand uh, some classification but uh, negative and positive parables uh, see there are only a few uh, modern scholars go along with that classification Uh, but it can be a model, not uh, the. Uh, so that's what uh, uh, I want to observe. So another question I see: uh, the person's name is not there, but he or her, sorry, her yeah, epic, this epic. Galaxy A30 distinguish between parables and epics, stories among various religions. And another one is from Vishal. Sir, thank you very much for the presentation. Can you explain the redaction criticism on parables? Okay. Uh, let me take one by one. Uh, first, the epics is uh, certainly uh, it's a very general uh, and vast area. Uh, because when I said the, the the terminology reign of God, I was trying to say it all comes from the Abrahamic religion and the long tradition of Old Testament. Uh, Uh, tradition so if you consider those religious tradition and the epics and their uh, religious literature yes parables can be uh, connected of course there are indian parables certainly there are uh, indian uh, stories of uh, different versions that you find in the um, uh, gospel uh, parable so that it is possible but it is uh, like a mahayana reading uh, buddhist reading of john's gospel and it's like that that is not the absolute uh, and uh, point or that is not the destination but we can use that. Mm. yes so uh, then the redaction this sales question uh, about the redaction it is uh, yes because uh, uh, jesus uh, might not have used these uh, words you if you see the red red lecter bible or uh, historical critical sorry uh, historical jesus seminar people think they have left out certain words so jesus might not have used these terminologies maybe in the 40s or 50s gospel redactors added and the shaped or uh, scrutinized some of these terminologies without losing the basic uh, communicative framework of jesus uh, uh, parable so they have used uh, uh, certainly the redaction process i in vishal not all parables underwent the redaction Yes. Uh, you have the, the clear evidence is triple tradition. 
triple yes, traditions, yes. then you don't uh, you don't you don't have uh, that support from triple tradition. So it's not that for some parables that really underwent them. Uh, so next question is from Raj Kumar. Yes. Sir, how to understand Jesus' words? To you has been given the mystery of the kingdom of God, but those who are outside get everything in parables, so that while seeing they may see and not perceive, and while hearing they may hear and may not return and be forgiven. Of course, it is it is it is uh, quite straightforward. I think answer is there in your question. Uh, Jesus has given the disciples and the, the immediate listeners the context of the parable, the setting of the parable. And they did not understand the setting, cultural setting and their own unjust uh, hegemonic framework uh, that they have been experiencing. And then they raised uh, other doubts. So you, the Jesus placed those parables within their life situation, within their koinonia, within their fellowship, but they did not understand. So it is a clear indication. I go back to the old question about the contextual interpretation. Jesus is directly asking the disciples to understand your context, then get the meaning. I think that's uh, it's not, nothing hidden, nothing mystery, 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 but it is straightforward answer given by Jesus. So Tang Nen Mung, he is from Myanmar, he is asking a question. Are the parables authentic for strengthening Christian faith? Another question, how much parables can be used for to reflect the life of Indian farmers and fishermen? Indian? Farmers and fishermen. Okay. Authentic? Yes, authentic. Because uh, otherwise the whole question of canon, canonization and authentic scripture will not stand. Why do we have these 20 lectures based on New Testament themes? because uh, we consider these are authentic and these are the basic uh, materials uh, necessary for our faith. It is authentic because uh, most of those parables and sources go back to 20. I think uh, senior scholars will agree with me. Parables, sources are the oldest collection coming from the Jesus tradition, so very authentic. And the second question is exactly, it can be used for parables, uh, it can be used for the uh, farmers, Dalit struggle. I think the first two group used a parable for their survival and the uh, struggle of liberation was by the fisher folk, uh, inspired by the Catholic uh, liberation theology from Latin America, late 60s and 70s, the fisher folk uh, used. Then the farmers and the Dalits have used a lot of, uh, I should mention two names, uh, Dr. Santankar and Dr. Nyanabari. They have, uh, after, uh, the Dr. Janabaram has contrib consistently contributed articles uh, in English and Tamil. Of course, the Karaman, you know, he has written a lot of uh, materials uh, there. And now, I would say parables are used by ethicists uh, to promote ecotheology. And uh, you read any ethicist uh, Indian context, uh, starting from KC, many parables are used. Because the, to show the relationship between Jesus and the nature. And so the parables are used for our own elaboration of our own Christian faith. Angit Hari is asking his teacher at Allahabad, your evaluation on Indian theologian study on parable, your suggestions studying parable in corrupt situation. And Neo P. Kitchen, he, she is also a theological teacher. Sir, you have mentioned that in relation to kingdom of God, parables reflect theocentric, theocentric ethics and not Christocentric. Would you explain how? Okay. See, uh, Harry also was my student. See, unfortunately, uh, we the Indian scholars uh, from uh, 30 or 35 linguistic backgrounds uh, from various uh, states, Say, let's take from 1960s. Uh, many, many scholars come, see, uh, compared to the Western, Western, particularly uh, European countries, Indian uh, Academy has had so many uh, outstanding scholars. But the contributions uh, have not been focused. 
uh, I have only one suggestion. This is a milestone uh, step, I would say, historical step. Every by the L, when we meet SBSI, we should take one on team, parable, miracle, uh, or Old Testament prophets. Uh, then we contribute so that we will, 20 scholars at a time, they contribute. We haven't done that. Maybe early 60s, uh, uh, the founders of uh, SBSI probably tried. Then, you know, the, the scattered thing. Then, unfortunately, uh, New Testament scholars and Old Testament scholars have uh, become administrators. And <laughs> then they have uh, certainly uh, spent their energy in administration like what I do now. <laughs> I do now. So the Indian Christian, I am not in a position to make an evaluation, Angit, to be very frank. So I feel jealous of uh, Thomas Kuti, Dr. Johnson Thomas Kuti, because he is uh, uh, certainly focusing and he has taken probably a decision to sacrifice certain things and doing it. I know him very well, that's why I use the freedom too. So like that, Angit, so generations, uh, a new generation, people like you, uh, should come to that level. Otherwise, uh, I should limit the names, two or three names, uh, uh, like uh, Dr. Sanjum Kaur, Dr. Janavaram, uh, Maraya Rulraja, uh, one or two parables, that's all. Not an extensive uh, study of parables. Second uh, question, the kingdom of uh, theocentric, yes. Uh, because Jesus never, in a parable said, uh, Christ is the savior of the world. Rather, he talks, talked about a peaceful coexistence of the world and the salvation inherited uh, through the uh, God or the divine uh, salvation inherited uh, through the uh, Jewish religion. So the theocentricism is very much there and the ethics is more universalistic rather than the uh, Palestinian Jesus movement ethics. So it is uh, very uh, theocentric, always bad. So Jobin is asking a question, uh, sir, can you explain the origin of the concept of teaching through parables? And Reverend Mahabub Noble from Pakistan is asking a question, did Jesus use parables to create the meaning or to communicate meanings? The origin of teaching through parables is a rabbinic. Uh, it's, a, it's a method of, uh, mm, I give you an example. And then I'll give you the footnote. One preacher, a prominent preacher from South India, once preached uh, the difference between CSI pastors and uh, Pentecostal pastors. CSI pastors have uh, points, but no power. Pentecostal pastors have uh, power, no points. And footnote, Dr. Nyanavan. <laughs> so this is a parable. This is a parable you will always remember. <laughs> There is a truth or there is no truth, we don't know. <laughs> so it's a teaching method. It's an attractive teaching method. It's picking up examples from your own context and you uh, explain. It. So that is the only thing. The last... And uh, uh, Mahabub's uh, question, uh, to create meaning, to communicate. Did Jesus, to create meaning or to communicate uh, meaning? To communicate meanings, not to create meaning. I think I'm clear to Mahabub. To communicate meaning. Meaning is uh, basically gospel. And to communicate gospel, Jesus used different patterns. So the last, uh, okay. last two questions. Hmm. Sir, the parable of woman that who lost one coin out of ten, it can be interpreted in terms of virginity. If it is so, the conduct varies from ages to ages then how far those parables can be interpreted in present context? And another one, since parables are short stories, which is just an example given in Jesus' context, can parables be myth? Or is it true to life situation as parables exploit realistic situation? Okay. See, as long as uh, we don't distinguish Jesus from his context, uh, we need not worry about uh, that uh, distinction. Because uh, what Jesus communicated, uh, basing his argument on the Palestinian context, certainly the meaning of that, uh, the people's experience of that context. So I should, uh, 
with all my uh, research and information say we need not distinguish from that context because that context uh, is a pattern as long as we don't distinguish jesus from that context as so take the parabolic context as uh, the real context then i see a question uh, from uh, uh, reverend victor paul about the myth yes uh, myth is the uh, truth myth is not false <laughs> a truth uh, uh, mixed with the history and of course the literary figures uh, literary uh, devices that's uh, myth so uh, let it be myth but it is true it is true so thank you so much uh, reverend dr david joy for your erudite uh, presentation we have more questions that is coming up that can be answered later later in a personal level and is that uh, while dr david joy was beginning his paper he started with a statement we have to pay attention to the parables of jesus okay. that is a significant statement and uh, we know that even though even though we are taking up parables for sermonizing and various other things we are not significantly pay attention on the exegetical aspects of the parables and not presenting with all the semantic and the syntactic and the pragmatic aspects of the parables to the levels of the congregation so in that sense we have heard how to look at the parables that is very important while jesus used the parables he used the multiple layers of meaning and also we know that uh, as uh, dr david joy was presenting about adolf jolicher it is that the history of the interpretation of parables itself can be divided into three pre jolicher period until 19th century full of allegorical interpretation then jolicher through his two volume work a paradigm shift happened and later on ch dod and j jeremias okay they foregrounded the significance of parables okay in relation to uh, multi various levels mm -hmm. so in that way dr david joy was uh, telling us about the parables are mirrors of the socio religious politico cultural realities so don't read parables as merely stories that is what he was firmly affirming parables reveal the palestinian judaism parables reveal the life situation of jesus parables reveal the 611 crusade that means the early life situation so jesus confrontation with the hegemonic powers as he was rightly mentioning that is another significant aspect that foreground through the parabolic okay a uh, sayings of jesus so that way you see my dear friends five significant aspects he was foregrounding the history of the interpretation of the parables and the par parables in the palestinian jewish or judaistic context and how parables are interconnected together with the kingdom of god and how parables are to be looked at in closer relationship to to the non canonical writings so when he says non canonical writings even we can look at bhagavad gita ramayana and the indian scriptures islamic scriptures buddhist scriptures and various other scriptures to get meaning okay in relationship and also finally he was talking about the uh, potentiality of the parables in the contemporary context in relation to the women struggles the dalit struggles the tribal struggles ecological struggles is that jesus was schooled in nature many of the parables show that he was the son of a soul so from that aspect or point of view we have to look at the parables with myriad possibilities so dr david joy was giving us okay multi phases levels of okay understandings and myriad possibilities to explore the semantic the syntactic and the pragmatic levels of uh, the parables that are inscribed in the synoptic gospels So, my dear friends, let us give a big applause to Dr. David Joy. And the question for uh, this uh, week is: 
so in that we have uh, uh, we had last week all the weeks we are having assignments to the students so in that 165 people are registered and is that uh, i could see that excellent assignments are coming out so some of the assignments we are posting on the facebook uh, walls and this week you can explore uh, a question on the significance of jesus parables in the synoptic gospels okay in the contemporary struggles of people in india today mm. or in your own context pakistani context or myanmar context okay or sri lankan context some representatives are here from sri lanka also from sri lankan context or from the nepali context okay a framed question will be sent to you very soon okay so until then uh, be peaceful and next week we are going to have another significant scholar he is father dr jos manikparambil and he is a johannian scholar and he is going to speak about the discourses of jesus in the fourth gospel the discourses of jesus in the fourth gospel good good okay god bless us so uh, over to uh, uh, Milun, sir. Once again, we thank uh, Sir David Joy for the very insightful presentations. It covers many aspects on the parables of Jesus in the Synoptic Gospels, and also we thank uh, Dr. Johnson Thomas Kutty for moderating the sessions. Uh, friends, uh, we would like to congratulate all uh, who have done a marvelous job. in writing your assignments uh, today we graded seven persons a so hearty congratulations and uh, uh, an earnest request from our part if you can kindly send us your assignments every wednesday before 5 pm so that we will have more time in reading and going through your assignments thank you so much thank you for your active participation good evening good night thank you thank you, thank you very thank much you.